In GTA, it's possible to add environment mapping, also known as reflection mapping, to world objects. It's mostly used on vehicles for chrome parts and horizon mapping on surface materials, but can in fact also be applied on world objects despite rarely being used. This can be useful for windows on buildings, metallic surfaces, house floors, ceramics, and other materials that typically shine in the real world. Despite being a texture, the only 3D mesh data that is required to display environment mapping is vertex normals. Vertex normals is primarily used in shading vehicles and character models, whereas vertex colors is used in shading world objects. There is one issue that you need to be aware of when adding environment mapping to world objects. Normally, most world objects have unique daylighting and unique night lighting. However, if the model is exported with unique night lighting, then the environment mapping will appear to be tiled two times in game, and the end map opacity will not work. Therefore, I will only export daylighting. The daylighting will then show during both day and night, but that is fine. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3DS Max. For this video, I will be using a sphere and a plane primitive. As explained earlier, the env map depends on vertex normals. I will create a copy of each model to show the difference. I will auto smooth one pair with an angle of zero, meaning there will be no smooth shading at all, and set one smoothing group to the other pair. It can be hard to see how auto smooth makes a difference, and so it can help turning off materials temporarily or switching to clay mode. As you can see, it is only the sphere that has changed its appearance between the two copies. The reason for that is, the plane is planar, angled at 90 degrees, and so the vertex normals are all pointing in the same direction. When a polygon's vertex normals are pointing in the same direction, as is the case with our plane, the env map will look crystallized, or like a disco ball. We can correct this by reorienting the vertex normals. An easy way of doing this is adding shell to the plane, because this creates a new set of polygons that are pointing another direction. If we then move our smooth modifier back to the top of our stack, the box's vertex normals are now unified in all corners, which has resulted in them pointing outwards away from the center of the box. This is perfect for environment mapping. Before we can remove the thickness from the plane, we need to bake the vertex normals, as otherwise the unified normals will be gone once we delete the polygons that share the same vertex normal. We can now disable the shell modifier, because the new vertex normal data has already been baked into the modifier in the top of our stack. Before exporting the files to the game for testing, we need to add the reflection texture to the material and choose a reflection opacity. I will set mine as 30%. I will also set a material alpha of 75%, because this is glass. I will merge the models into one and add some fairly dark vertex colors, because with environment mapping, the model will naturally be brighter. I will only add lighting today colors, because as explained earlier, night lighting causes limitations for the env map effect in game. Because this model is only for testing purposes, I will use the model to generate collisions. 
the glass and the environment map textures just need to be added to your .txt file as usual.